swear to me that everything you said about the fireflies is true. I swear. Okay. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So guys, we have to talk about Joel's decision in the final episode of The Last of Us. After a long journey, Joel and Ellie finally found the fireflies, but the hope for a happy ending with the cure turned into a heartbreaking bloodbath. Joel chose violence and killed everyone. He saved Ellie, but in doing so, condemned everyone else. Yeah, but Ellie is safe, so that's what matters. Well, that's the question, isn't it? Was Joel right to do this to protect Ellie, or was Joel wrong, and in his selfish need to protect his surrogate daughter, he robbed humanity of a second chance? This is your chance. You keep her alive, and you set everything right. Now, this is a debate that goes all the way back to 2013 when the original game was released. Both the show and the game create this powerful moral debate about Joel's actions. Well, look, you saw the title of the video, so you know where we stand. Joel was wrong, but that doesn't mean that the Fireflies were right. See, this is the beauty of The Last of Us. There's a complicated moral debate in every aspect of this story. Every perspective is sort of flawed. Nothing is simple, and there are no easy choices. This is why exploring Joel's decision is so interesting. But as complicated as all this is, the simple fact of this is Joel was wrong, and this video is going to explain why. I know you mean well. I know you want to protect me. You have. But there's no halfway with this. We finish what we started. All right, so first let's bring everybody up to speed on Ellie's condition and why she had to die to make this cure. Ellie's mother, Anna, was infected with cordyceps while she was pregnant, but it happened mere seconds before Ellie was born. But cordyceps works fast, so it infected Ellie at her birth. Ellie lived with the infection since she was a baby, and the cordyceps grew within her, producing a chemical messenger that tricks normal cordyceps. And that is how she's immune when she's infected as a teenager. The fireflies believe that Ellie's immunity could create a cure. Multiply the cells in a lab, produce those chemical messengers, and then we can give it to everyone. But to make this cure, they need to remove the cordyceps from Ellie, a process that will kill her. Well, why is that? Well, because the cordyceps infection grows inside the brain. So the Firefly's doctor needs to remove the cordyceps from Ellie's brain, and that procedure would kill her. These doctors. Joel couldn't allow for the Fireflies to take Ellie from him, so he killed them all. I guess I've killed maybe 20 people, maybe 40. 20 years earlier, he was powerless to save his own daughter. Sarah's death broke Joel. He even attempted to kill himself, but due to dumb luck, he survived. And after that, he just kept on surviving. Though it was a bleak existence, he had no real purpose, nothing to live for. He became a cynical man, a murderer, and a monster. But he regained his humanity thanks to Ellie. So time heals all wounds, I guess. It wasn't time that did it. Joel needs Ellie. She's his purpose now, and he must protect her at all costs, even if it means killing everyone who threatens his surrogate daughter. So, from Joel's point of view, there is no choice here at all. Joel is a parent, and what parent wouldn't do anything to protect their child, cure or no cure? Well, I mean, I'm on Team Joel. The fireflies suck anyways. All right, well, cool. Let's talk about that. Let's try to defend Joel's choice. From a certain point of view. First of all, can we really trust the Fireflies to develop this cure successfully? I mean, this is the post-apocalypse we're talking about. It is doubtful they can mass-produce the cure efficiently at this point. For all we know, they can't even manufacture the cure at all. I mean, the Fireflies' doctor believes that Ellie's unique condition could create a cure, but no one knows for certain if it will work. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to do some more tests before killing the only person in the whole world who is immune. Just saying. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Also, the openings of both episodes made it clear that it may be impossible to cure cordyceps. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. Tidak ada obat. Dan tidak ada vaksin. Not to mention that the Fireflies take the choice away from Ellie. Marlene doesn't want to give Ellie a vote because the cure is more important than Ellie's wishes. She must be sacrificed for the greater good. And the Fireflies prove time and time again that they're really incompetent and careless. In the first episode, most of the Fireflies get killed in the Boston QZ. In the second episode, a bunch of others get killed at the rendezvous point. They entrusted humanity's only hope in the hands of two brutal smugglers instead of getting an army of Fireflies to escort Ellie to safety. And then all of them get wiped out out by a 56-year-old man. Not to mention that these so-called freedom fighters are into blowing stuff up, not really caring who gets caught in the crossfire in their war against Fedra. So even if they create a cure, can they really be trusted to give that cure to everyone? Considering all of this, maybe we're giving them too much credit that they could actually create a cure, let alone save what's left of humanity. 
And sure, if we apply real world science to this, then maybe it's hopeless, but I mean, it's a fictional story. So let's assume that within the context of the story, the fireflies will be able to create a cure. If the cure would work, then humanity might have a chance to rebuild civilization. And this might be a terrible thing to say, but if sacrificing Ellie's life saves everyone else, isn't that the right thing to do? Wouldn't Ellie want to give her life for the greater good? Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. But here's the thing guys, none of this matters to Joel. Whether or not the Fireflies can create a cure is not even a factor in his decision. When Joel made that choice to save Ellie and kill the Fireflies, he didn't care if they could actually save the world. He didn't consider the cure at all, or even the world for that matter. Joel did this for one reason only. He protected Ellie. He created a powerful bond with her and she became the daughter he lost. And now the Fireflies expect him to experience that terrible pain all over again. I mean, for Joel, that is not an option. His decision is not rational. It's made from pure emotion. He loves Ellie and he cannot live without her. The things I do for love. <laughs> Joel's love for Ellie is fundamentally destructive because for him, it's less about saving Ellie and more about not losing her. And no matter how much we understand Joel's reasons, the truth is that his actions are horrific. What he did is morally wrong. He kills the fireflies, he kills the doctors, he destroys any chance for a cure. Joel stole the world's future because for him, there is no future without Ellie. What does cordyceps do? Is it evil? No, it feeds and protects its children and it secures its future with violence if it must. So it doesn't matter if the fireflies can or cannot actually make a cure. Joel is not thinking about the future of humanity because the last 20 years taught him to survive by being selfish and brutal. He has spent a long time caring only about his own life and the lives of the people that he protects, like Tommy and Tess. No one else matters. If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? You keep going for family. And now the only one that matters is Ellie. The rest of the world can burn for all he cares. Now on top of all the murder and condemnation of the human race, Joel also robs Ellie of her agency. Granted, he doesn't really get a chance to let her choose because the Firefly stole that choice from her first. But by the point Joel learned about what they were planning, it was too late for any conversations. That being said, Joel clearly knows that what he did was wrong because he lies to Ellie about what really happened. Now you could say that he's protecting her from the truth, that he doesn't want to put that burden on her. But in truth, he lies because he knows that telling Ellie what he did might tear apart their relationship. And his lies became uglier with him making things up. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you. Dozens of them. The doctors, they couldn't make any of it work. They've stopped looking for a cure. This lie crushes Ellie because for her, it means that all of her sacrifices were for nothing. Ellie has experienced immense trauma in her short life. She lost people that she loved and cared for. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Her trauma only intensified after what happened with David, a turning point that might have destroyed a part of her forever. A crucial aspect of Ellie's personality is her survivor guilt. Ellie and Riley were both infected. Ellie survived, but Riley turned and Ellie had to kill her. After that, it was Tess and then Sam. She took on that guilt. We saw how her inability to save Sam crushed her. It'll work, right? The vaccine. I tried with Sam. I wanted to save him. Deep down, Joel knows that if given the chance, and Ellie knew that her sacrifice could save the Rileys and Sams of the world, she would not hesitate to sacrifice herself. She would see it almost like balancing the scales, that it's only fair for her to give her life so everybody else gets a second chance after she got so many second chances herself. She is his purpose, but saving humanity was her purpose. And Joel stole that purpose from her, her only chance to honor the people that died for her. When and if Ellie discovers what Joel did, she might never forgive him for that. Because she lives in a broken world that you could have saved. But it isn't for you to decide. Or you. So what would she decide, huh? because I think she'd want to do what's right. And what's next for Joel and Ellie now? Ellie may or may not recover from her trauma. Maybe they find a safe haven in Jackson. They might even have a somewhat normal life, but sooner or later, Joel will die. I mean, the average life expectancy in this world isn't very high. By then, Ellie would likely be a skilled survivor, but Joel condemned her to lead a harsh life with a hopeless future in a world that she could have saved. Ellie's death would have meant that there could be a cure. It would have created a safer world for Tommy and Maria's children. And when you think about it, every character that Joel and Ellie meet through the season and serves as an interesting parallel to Joel's decision. For example, Tess. She sacrificed herself to give Joel and Ellie a chance to escape. She died believing in Ellie and the cure. This is your chance. You get her there. You keep her alive. And you set everything right. 
True, Tess was infected, so she was going to die anyways, but she went out on her own terms. In her final moments, Tess fully believed that Ellie could be a second chance for humanity, and Ellie would likely want to go out that way as well. Frank and Bill represent a more hopeful outlook for the world. When Frank decides to die, Bill accepts his decision. He could have fought it, tried to find some way to change his lover's mind, delay the inevitable. But instead, Bill loved Frank the way he wanted him to. Then love me the way I want you to. This story had two important lessons for Joel. The first was finding something to live for, like Frank gave Bill a reason to live. The second is understanding when it's time to let your loved ones go. Joel's best lesson was in Endure and Survive. Kathleen was so blinded by her need for revenge that she was willing to do horrible things for her own selfish needs. And in the end, she and her people died for it. In the same way, the world's going to suffer from Joel's selfish decision. Now, Henry did some bad things as well, but we can justify his actions because he did them to protect his brother. But after Sam is infected and attacks Ellie, Henry has to make a terrible choice. Kill his brother or let him tear Ellie apart. Now, Henry made the right choice. It may seem like the only choice, but how can Henry kill his brother even if he's infected? But he chooses to save Ellie and let his brother go, knowing that it's the only way. However, he couldn't live with what he did. And this is the fundamental scene for Joel, because Joel faced a similar conflict in the end. Let Ellie die to save everyone else or save Ellie and condemn what's left of humanity. Now sure, the post-Cordyceps world sucks and it might be hopeless. Humanity might be too far gone. Civilization has been reduced to lost tribes ruled by the oppressive Fedra and the insane leaders like David and Kathleen. And most people are kind of terrible. So you could even say that the last remnants of humanity don't even deserve to live. But that's a nihilistic worldview. Nihilist. I mean, say what you want about the tenets of National Socialism, dude. At least it's an ethos. The show introduced many horrible people, but it also proved time and time again that this world is filled with good people. Like Frank and Bill. Like Tommy and Maria. Like Sam. Like that amazing old couple. What about the fireflies? We get those in the summer. Not the bugs, the people. There are firefly people? <laughs> <laughs> Should all of them just die because the rest of the world sucks? The Jackson community is proof that there can be life, hope, and civilization in this bleak world. And with the cure, humanity could rebuild the world. Sure, some people are too far gone, but every society has some bad people, with or without a fungus infection. But if you just keep going, you find something new to fight for. But now, there's no hope. Joe robbed everyone of that chance because of his traumas, his dependence on Ellie, and his need to have a daughter. And that is why he's wrong. But that's what makes The Last of Us one of the greatest stories ever told. So what do you guys think? Was Joel wrong or was he justified in what he did? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.